humours of Ballycran. It would bring tears to the eyes of a turnip, said a man in his cups, holding on for dear life to the bar in the saltwater brig, to see the state of the roads at six road ends, and the grass that grows through the cracks in the runways at Kirkiston Air Base. Though it's many's the long day since the last American rose into the low skies above a derelict cottage in Ballycran Beg, and left the field to the racing drivers and long-footed Irish hare, the one a bestial roar, the other a whisper in long grass. Now I'm told I've as much chance of kissing again, at my age, in my condition, as there is of that crab apple tree spreading nine pound notes, or nuns coming back to nuns quarter, or a puma or panther stalking the hills of the county down. And if that came to pass, wouldn't they scar the low country with their marksmen and nets, their guns and their helicopters? And wouldn't the poor thing be hunted down and put to death? So I'll act my age, he said, and I'll keep my lips to myself. Portrait of a young nobleman holding a lemur. Conspirator, swordsman, amateur poet, his pet on its silver chain has the skinniest arms and widest eyes in the whole chateau. Blind-looking, feral glamour stares and stares at something you can't see. Imagine fur and weeping scullions, maps of the wars. They don't as a rule, live long. What will he do when its brittle bones are buried in the keep? Who will he find to talk to? How will he sleep? The architecture of fire stations. You know those hollow towers and folding fortress doors, wide turning circles, formal yet common, welcoming but stern. You know the coarse, pragmatic optimism of the will with which the concrete's poured, the ribbon cutting. Will we never learn? You know our love affairs have been like this, built from hard-earned experience and each time better. Still our houses burn. Moscow Road In the cold light of spring it's a photograph from picture post factories, gasometers Moscow Road is cutting a swathe through wetlands towards a horizon of cranes and windsocks of cargo ships There's been a light drift of snow and the Nissan huts are sugared with it Nothing moves until a turboprop comes into land and scares a single pearl grey heron from the reed beds. It beats past Bauhaus offices, a refugee, a ghost from the show trials over our heads. Ration books, industry, the war years. Connolly Window. With your nose pressed against a stained glass window, portraying James Connolly tied to a kitchen chair with a target pinned to his heart like a poppy day poppy. You're either an honoured guest in the Lord Mayor's parlour, watching smoke clear from the grounds of City Hall, or peering in from outside as the shade of Winnie Carney, fresh from a night of markswoman ship and shorthand, waltzes her ex-orangeman husband, her red prod on marble floors, and it was far from marble you were reared. The Resurrection of the Body at Kelly Sugan. To think it would happen just at the dawn of winter, querulous rooks startled from bald woods like banknotes from a fire. We are back in our bodies, if not back in our clothes. Even the dead babies reborn in the prime of lives they'd never had. And the old timers struck again by sex's ambush. The gravedigger's shed is a boudoir. 
but so is every headstone, obelisk and grass-grown path. A moss-gowned virgin tactfully lifts her gaze over a sandstone wall towards Bradshaw's Bray. There are hundreds of us making love here, all in the blink of a trumpet, in a single note from an eye. Hokusai. Pushing 80, this old man daft for art hikes across the island to paint waves. Finally, he thinks, mastery of his craft is within reach. At worst, another 30 years of looking and thinking. His eyesight's good, his head as clear as it ever was. Still, these waves might be his last, so he decides to paint them male and female, tickled to have them locked in separate panels, all turmoil and frustration and raw difference. You couldn't fish for tuna in those seas, he thinks. He thinks, too many wives, I've grown too cynical. And yet he can't resist the colours brought from Europe, as he once could not resist a pretty girl. That's gone, he notes, that old libidinous get up and go. He's finally shed at least that much desire, and any bitter taste is sluiced away by tides of mauve and jewelled reds from England's factories, of oceanic blues and greens. He tells himself, When I'm a hundred I shall be a marvellous artist, and after I am dead, a will-o'-the-wisp taking it easy in the dark, always in the next field, and then the next, while more and more often, foreigners dock their tall ships in the harbours of Japan. The Ballad of Moscow Joe in the war of words between Philomena Begley and Susan McCann, who was who and which was queen of Irish country music, I lost two figurine-encrusted art cars, torched by yobs with a grudge against what's beautiful. That was the thick end of a wedge that had seen my wife abandon our marriage, as well as the bungalow I glorified with collaged knick-knacks, doctored garden ornaments, Objet trouvé, hand-picked junk, notices to the world in general and Carnlock in particular. To her it was nothing but merts. To me it was, as she had been, a way of living with the world's embarrassment of riches without it breaking our hearts, which are born broken. All this stuff, these assemblages and amateur road signs, is just the wages of heartbreak. And when my children launch their purge, it will be swept away. As Philomena might well sing, this ain't my home unless you wear my ring. So bulldoze the bungalow. All this furious decorating was only ever meant to reconcile me to the lack of... Well, when country music's played in reverse on a tape deck, your truck starts, your dog gets better, your girl comes back. The self-published. Our mistake was writing too much for people like ourselves, when people like ourselves were thin on the ground. We were all in love with this world, that city or some wife, but it was unrequited. Type rattled off glass. Philosophers say that there can't be such a thing as a private language, and they're right, but only by the skin of their teeth. Put it down in your own words, our teachers said. It was not good advice. Mm -hmm.